Do you dig the blues as much as I dig the blues? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Now, I made a pretty bold statement saying this is the number one jazz blues lick for guitars. And the only thing you can do is prove me wrong, but you got to watch the video. Before we get started, I want to share with you how you can get access to more videos like this one. Just navigate to Bruce Gregory Video On Demand. When you get to the site, you can browse videos in a wide variety of categories. Each video covers a different topic and has bonus content and supporting documentation. There's even a free trial option. Don't forget to use your promo code to get a discount off your first purchase. And the link for that promo code is in the description down below. Now, if you dig the video, throw it a like, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell notification because that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. So let's get started. The blues, dig it. Why do we love the blues so much? Well, it just sounds so good. Look, everybody loves the blues. And if they tell you they don't, they're probably lying because when they hear it, they stop and say, wow, that really sounds great. Now, players from Pat Martino to George Benson to Grant Green and Wes Montgomery, of course, horn players like Charlie Parker, Miles Davis, and don't forget John Coltrane always use the blues in their playing. And for good reason. It gives us that feel because jazz and blues are cousins that are so closely connected, it's almost impossible to pull them apart. Now, I made a bold statement at the beginning of this video that this is the number one jazz blues lick for guitars, and I'm going to tell you why. First, it's got harmony, or it starts with harmony. In this case, this lick starts with a part of a G7 chord. The next thing is, it's got this really memorable lick that accents not only the minor third, but also the major third. Now, it doesn't have to be both, but this lick has both. And three, and probably the hardest that we're going to spend a little bit of time on, is the triplet, and primarily the eighth note triplet. Now, that's a really, really hard concept for guitarists to get under their fingers, but I'm going to try to give you some strategies to help you with that and it's only going to take practice. So let's check it out. I played this lick at the beginning of the video in a tune called B's Blues in G. It's a G blues with standard blues changes. That'll be in the PDF that you get at the end of the lesson or in the link in the description. Now, I'm going to play it for you one more time to get it in your ears so you can kind of see how it works and then we'll pick it apart. Check it out. I said that this lick is number one because it's got these three elements. It starts with harmony, and this one does. It starts with a G7 chord, a shell voicing. Now, I'm not going to get too far into shell voicings, but essentially, it's just a three-note G7 chord. It starts on the seventh, which in this case is F, and I'm using my first finger in a bar. If you're not used to doing that, the best way to get it is to try to collapse your finger at the knuckle. And that helps you to kind of get, you're looking for this shape. A lot of players struggle with that, but it's really not that hard. And it's not a lot of pressure. You're just a little bit of pressure when collapsing that knuckle and you can get the bar across. Now, it's an F. Then I'm playing the third, which is B, and the fifth, which is D. So it's that triangle shape, kind of like a D, but it's one string over. All right, and that's the first part of the lick, right? Then it plays that memorable part, which pings off the minor third and the major third. Remember, I said it doesn't have to be both, but this one actually does. Check it out. Now, that part is a little complicated because I'm playing that harmony, that chord, and then immediately... I'm going to play that E, which is the sixth, right? And the easiest way to do that is just to kind of get your third finger in position. And the main way to work on licks like this, 
yes, there are all connected. But if you work on transitions one part at a time and you perfect that, you put it together like the links on the chain. Think about it. A 20-foot chain, they don't build it all at once. They build it one link at a time and perfect each link so that it's connected and solid till you get a rock-solid chain. The same thing with working on this lick. So I've got... And then I play the lick, which is G. And I'm playing the minor third and the major third. Now that is gold when it comes to blues licks. It just has the feeling of blues. I could play. And that works. And that's okay. That's pretty good. But to me, that just has that feel and that sound that make it memorable. You're never going to forget it. And it shows up in a lot of tunes, a lot of blues playing from Robert Johnson, honestly, into rock playing as well. Now, the hardest part about this lick is the triplet. And my advice to you is this. The triplet is one of the most complex kinds of things to play on the guitar, particularly the eighth note triplet, because there's not really a good way to play it on the guitar one way. So what I mean by that is there are really kind of three strategies I use to play triplets. One, legato technique. So I use a legato technique, which is either a hammer-on or a pull-off or a combination of both. Now, the second technique around that is alternate picking. Alternate picking is the devil for some people, going up and down and crossing strings, but that's a technique that helps you with triplets. And sometimes you need to alternate pick triplets, particularly in jazz playing, because they weren't really written for our kind of instrument. They were written for horns that can play vertically much easier in some ways. But sometimes it's not practical because of speed, and sometimes it's just the way it fingers. And so we have to use sweep picking, and that is the crusher for a lot of people. Now, the triplet feel, you need to get your arms around sweep picking, and I'm not going to get too far into it, but if you are interested in sweep picking and you go to my website, there are a few lessons under the skill base section and that'll give you some strategies to help you get that under your fingers. But for today, we're going to look at it in the context of a lick. Now, as I said, eighth note and sixteenth note triplets are the hardest. The first part of the lick is kind of the easiest, and then it does an eighth note triplet, but it's a hammer-on, which is a little bit easier. And we're not crossing strings, but the next part of the lick is a sixteenth note triplet, and it crosses strings, so we're going to have to use sweeping. And that's the complicated part. And what you have to do to navigate that is start on that G note. Those are the four notes involved. G, D, C, B. So it's a triplet, and that's G, D, and C. And the landing note is a B. And that's the next part of the lick. It's not that complicated of a sweep, but it's complicated enough that it might give you trouble. So that part I suggest you practice as itself. And what you're looking for is separation because the two notes, G and D, are right across like a bar, but you don't want... You want... Now, there are a lot of different ways to sweep, and to give you a quick 30-second lesson on it, I usually don't sweep directionally this way. I typically don't sweep pick where I'm moving my whole arm. I kind of use my wrist, and I find that that is just better for me because it doesn't interrupt my normal alternate picking or legato technique where I'm resting my palm on the guitar all the time. Different players have different strategies to get around it. But in this case, this is particularly directional picking. We really can't use alternate picking because of the speed of the lick. And legato is not going to work to sound the note enough. So we have to result to the third version, which is sweep. 
But once you get that part together, you can connect it. The first part, second part, and the third part. And then it's just a little line from A, A flat, G. So let's check that lick out. Now, here's another reason why I think this lick is number one. And this is another kicker. It can be used in the context of the song. At the beginning of the video, I used it just over the one chord, or G7, but it also can be used to end the end of a blues. So if I was at a 2-5, it's a great ending, but it's great within the context of the tune, and you could play it over the one, you could play it over the four, back to the one, and even over the five, if you wanted to do that. And that would create some pretty cool symmetry as well. Well, right on. There it is. The number one jazz blues lick for guitars. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I have other licks that I think are number one. And if you do, please leave them in the comments below and we can surely talk about it. And if you did really like this lesson, I have a new series on the Bruce Gregory site called 13 Jazz Blues Licks You Must Know. And it's killer. It's all transcribed for you with a PDF. And it takes you from licks of George Benson, Pat Martino, Robert Conti, Bruce Foreman, even myself. And it's really fantastic. I'll see you next time.